Um, Mehmet, where are you from? Well, originally I'm from Turkey and I have grown up in the capital city of Ankara. Lots of people might think the capital is still Istanbul, but it's not Istanbul. Ankara, right in the center of the land and um, it's kind of a boring city. What's the population of Ankara, roughly? I think around, just around 8, 9 million, I think. So describe, so you're, you're a real city boy then, aren't you? I was. I was. I grew up in the city, yes. So describe the home that you were brought up in. Who was there? Was it a flat or a, a house? Or? Those years, talking about 70s, um, I'm 57 this year, and um, everything was so natural, so different than now. Even though it was a big city, but it was still growing up, still, still uh, getting large and uh, lots of developments going on. Um, during that time, we had a lovely area called um, Yeni Mahalle, means new town. And uh, those houses in the town was built for um, civil servants. A bit like Harlow, actually, when you think. And um, those houses were mainly three stories. You got ground floor, first floor, and second floor, and we had a ground floor flat. Three bedrooms, one small kitchen, and a bathroom, tiny little toilet, but we had the garden. And my life was almost every day in spending hours in the garden. And um, but now those houses been knocked down, redeveloped, they built seven, eight, ten story flats, very little parking for cars because population grown up in there and uh, I think a lot of residents living in that area are now complaining what has happened to the area but it's too late now. So tell me about your mum and dad. Oh yeah, uh, my m mother was a housewife and um, all her job was looking after us, m me and my brother only brother. He was uh, four and a half years older than me. He's still in Ankara. He's a civil servant. He works for the government. And uh, my mother was always looked after us, cooked fresh dinners, breakfast in the morning, washed for us, clothed for us, cleaned the house, worried for our exams, took us shopping, and my father was a police officer and uh, he was very, very on the job man. He was very good, and very strict. He was on the right side of the police force. He was plain clothes as well. And nobody knew that he was a police officer apart from the gun, that pistol that he carried under his, you know, poster. Uh, and um, yeah. What about men at school? Describe your school for us and what were your favourite subject, <laughs> or maybe your lesser favourite subject. Mehmet and school went well for, for, for a while. I mean, I was, I was very, very um, energetic child. I couldn't stop. I loved football. I loved running around in my roads where I grew up. I was naughty but nice. Everyone knew me in my road especially the housewives, they used to call me, Mehmet, can you get us bread, bread of loaf? Mehmet, can you get a pint of milk? Mehmet, can you get us like cleaning uh, detergent or whatever that they did it from the corner shop? I was always on the hand. I was always helped everyone. But I was naughty as well. I was really naughty. I knew all the fruit trees behind the gardens, not the front of the gardens, behind the gardens, behind the houses, who's got what tree in their garden. And, and what, you mentioned these fruit trees. Why were you liberating fruit from these fruit trees? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, no. We were picking it when they when they um, ripe. We had apricots. We had uh, queens. We had uh, cherries. We had quite a plenty of choices. And um, uh, what I mentioned at school. Did you have any favourite subjects or these favourite subjects? It was, uh, of course, it was PE. You know, I was in the football and running and um, 
Then I hook up with the volleyball. It's quite popular in Turkey, not as much in England. I was um, hoping that I could play here when I came to England, but it didn't happen. So I was playing um, football and volleyball after I, I was presenting my school after a while. And uh, I wasn't keen on maths, but I ended up going to uni, studied economics. That's another thing that happened in life. And, and where was the university? It was in Turkey, one of the Turkish universities I started before I immigrated to England when I was 22. And um, then obviously I left everything behind, I couldn't finish, but then after I have completed and graduated just a few months ago. After 30, 36 years later. Better late than that. Um, what about things like holidays? Did you go away on holiday or were you, were you aware of traveling in other parts of Turkey at all? When I was, Wait, when I was young. Did you go on holiday anywhere? We did, uh, we did go to uh, mainly um, ancestral town that where my mum and dad came from rather than going for sea holidays if I need to be uh, correct on that. I remember just once or twice I had visited Istanbul where my uncle, my father's brother used to live and another city, Izmir, which is Aegean coast, uh, coastal city and um, that's about it as, as a sea holidays. Apart from that we usually uh, visited my mom and my father's um, village which they came from a city called Sivas and there's a village there which is quite near to city center and we used to go there and had a fantastic time in the village. Village life is beautiful life I still love it. Um, in reality I love to live in village right now I wish I could. Um, when we go there you know lots of animals the cattle and the uh, cows the chicken and, and they used to do uh, farming as well my uh, relatives my uncles and aunts so we used to help them well call it a help but you know what, how, how much can you help when you're a child basically what about food what about cuisine cooking when you think back what do you what meals stand out for you whether it's at home or oh, yeah. anywhere else yeah well during my childhood there was no McDonald's there was no Wimpy there was no KFC or Burger King um, there were a few restaurants, but restaurant life wasn't that popular in Turkey at the time, talking about 70s, 80s. We always had home-cooked meals and quite a bit of variety as well because my mom was a really good cook. I'm sure everybody's mother is the same. Um, she used to cook meat dishes, fish dishes, vegetables. Fresh vegetables was the uh, king in our uh, in our basically uh, dinner table. So she always cooked lovely soups she used to make and desserts. She was really good at that. So we always had our meal at home. Very rarely we used to go to barbecues out there, like picnic type of thing. And we are allowed to make a fire and do our fresh meats on the open field and have some fun. People love to holiday in Turkey now, don't they? Much more than they used to. Are there areas of Turkey, though, you know, somebody says, if you go to Turkey once, you should really go there. And you're not the tourist board, but are there, hmm. when you think of great places and beautiful places in Turkey, where do you think of? It's all, obviously, like you said, it's depend on the people that, what sort of holiday they like. But Turkey is a country, Michael, it's just caters for everyone, I believe, because it's a such a vast country and uh, three-sided, um, full of s coastal areas and sea. Um, if you like mountain and you got a little bit of adrenaline junkie, you can go to rivers. We got quite crazy rivers running, so you can do raftings. If you like to do uh, oh, sea and uh, sun. As I said, you can go to Asian coast, you can go down south, uh, Mediterranean coast, Alanya, Antalya, and you've got Kash, you've got Kalkan, and if you like, um, be off nightlife, 
clubbing, you can go to AG in Coast, Bodrum, Marmaris, Fethiye. It's beautiful, beautiful choices. Where Turkey is geographically, you know, do you see, did you see Turkey as part of Asia or Middle East or Europe? Where did you see Turkey? Or just Turkey on its own? We, <sighs> this is a little political actually. I mean, I, I always seen Turkey is mixed, I mean, in between Europe and Asia. Uh, okay, very vast part of it in Asia, but still connected to Europe. Um, and dominantly, the population lives in the European side anyway. In Istanbul, it's just over 20 million population. And uh, Turkey is 85 at the moment, I think 85 million. Um, it's quite a big number. Uh, where is Turkey is? Um, as I said, it's just in between. Uh, people mostly feel they're in Europe or they're in Asia. It do doesn't make difference for the people in Turkey, I, I, I think. Um, but what happens is over the years, because as I said, it's a little bit of politics. Um, over the years, Turkish um, entry application to European Union being left unanswered for over 50 years, which Turkey was the, uh, I think, second country signed the declaration for European, U European Union, still waiting at the doorstep. And that made people a little bit of wary about it. Most of them don't bother anymore. Don't, most of them doesn't care anymore. But it's not an identity for Turkey. Turkey is Turkey on their own, really. A few years ago, and we can just see, just as I pan across here, your charity trek, your cycle to uh, Turkey. What was it like on the cycle? You left here, we filmed it. What was it like when you crossed the border into Turkey? What was that moment like? It was, it was, oh, it was, I cannot describe that. It was, Michael, it was, I had all the emotions came in one go. When I saw the Turkish flag, the other side of the uh, border, you, which you could see from like a couple of miles in Bulgaria, I was uh, coming into Turkey, the Bulgarian city of Plovdiv, that was my last day that I left, which I cycled over 200 kilometers that day to finish it, which was my sixth week pledge ending that evening. So I did it, but the, the, the feeling, the emotions, everything came up. I remember I was crying, I have to be honest with you. 50 years old man, would he cry? I was crying. I was crying because I did it. I was crying for the hospice that I was raising money that I finished completely for them. I was crying for myself that I achieved something. I was crying that I'm going to leave some legacy for my grandchildren. You know, that sort of feelings. What's your relation, your children, what's their relationship with Turkey? Do they go there? Are they interested? Yeah. You know, it varies from child to child, doesn't it? Yeah, it um, varies, absolutely. Um, they're okay. They, they do love Turkey. They've been there a number of times. Not a lot of times, but they've got a taste of it, which is great. Um, one of my daughter ended up having a Turkish husband. She followed uh, father's footsteps, so she's got contact constant contact with Turkey now so she lives here but she's still you know uh, my other three children they know Turkey they've been Turkey unfortunately they can't speak Turkish apart from my daughter um, but they're connected so finally if I ask you the question where's home where's home that's a difficult one Michael we always find a difficult question <laughs> but this is the I think uh, question of all. Home is I think um, here unfortunately that's that's the uh, no matter what I think I spent most of my time in England made home got married got my children got my business got my friends um, I still got connected to Turkey but this is I think my home uh, earlier on I said unfortunately but it's not unfortunately it's a negative way fortunately it's my home Unfortunately, I have to choose in between. This is what I meant to say. But I think both places are the best. Having best of both, if I say. Um, I wouldn't be wrong, I think, on that. 